speak of question three, what it comes down to are the linkers and how you link everything together. Link it number one to number two to number three to number four. You know what I mean? And so this is definitely one of the biggest issues with a lot of students out there. Uh, and it's because without those linkers, how the hell are you going to connect anything? How the hell are you going to connect anything? It's going to be unbelievably difficult, you know? And so what we have to do, we have to figure out, okay, the then, the after, the a couple of years later, a few years later, a this, a that, that, those are the linkers and the sequencing markers that we need to write down. Because if we don't write them down, we are going to be lost, okay? Now, Let's break it down from the very beginning. What I do, I find that title right here. First thing you got to do, tip number one, find that title, Choice Support Advice. Okay, then what we have to do is, it says here, after selecting an option, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, now this sounds more of a, an example. So do we have to write this down? Not necessarily, but this could be our definition. So here we go. The reading is about choice supportive bias or choice supportive bias is defined as favoring an option or dot, 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 depending on what we do in terms of developing our own definition. Okay. So here we go. These are just two different ways, and I'm sure you use the same thing. The reading is about choice supportive bias, which is it's the same. <laughs> okay, everyone does the same thing. Now, I've been actually <laughs> using another version, like you know, choice supportive bias is defined as dot the dot the dot. You know, it makes it a lot sexier. Okay, it makes it a lot sexier. So here we go. It says people often make decisions by considering the advantages and disadvantages of each option. However, a person selects an option, if, I'm sorry, after a person selects an option, they have a tendency of favoring that option. Ta-da! We got it. So here we go. Choice supported bias is defined as favoring an option. No, no, no. I'm not going to say favoring an option. It's defined as weighing a couple of options before favoring one after selecting it initially? I don't know. That's, a, that's extremely difficult. I don't know what the hell I just said. Let me say that one more time. Choice supported bias is defined as weighing a couple of options before favoring one after selecting it initially. So what that means is, well, I selected this initial one, therefore I end up favoring it from here on out. Now, Maria Rebecca, I found the title. This one was a little bit more difficult, but what I do, I look both before, after and I look before. Now, you don't have to read the whole thing. All of this right here is bullshit. Goodbye. We don't care about examples. We don't care about specifics. We care about a general thesis before the professor it gives an example from his own life. This is what normally happens or a friend's life or blah, 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 motherfucking blah. Okay, so you said your biggest difficulty is at the very beginning, you're like, okay, well, I'm not exactly sure, you know, what, what I have to write down or trying to figure out how to redefine everything. Well, First and foremost, we just have to look at a general overall idea of what choice supportive bias is and then put it into our own words. That is it. That is it, Maria Rebecca. Okay. Okay. No specifics. No this. We don't have to read everything. Look before the title, which is obviously in the paragraph, and then after. Okay. All right. Do we understand this? Yep. Okay, so here we go. So now it's the note-taking part. So I want you to watch me, and then we're going to go from there, okay? Let me just make sure that I am sharing the sound, which I am. Fantastico. And then I'm going to press that play. Here we go. Watch me. Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in a psychology class. Psychology class. Okay. So, an example of this from my own life. Five or six years ago, I was helping a friend of mine decide on a house to buy. 
He had been in the market to buy a house, and he had it narrowed down to this one house that he was interested in. What he really liked about this house was it had an excellent location. It was in a great place that was actually in the same part of town where he was working, right up the street from his job, so he wouldn't have far to drive to get to work, which he really liked. However, the downside of this house was that it was smaller than what he was hoping to buy. He had wanted to buy sort of a big house, and this house just wasn't that big. So it was a tough decision, but my friend eventually did decide to buy the house. And a few years after he made the purchase, I remember we were talking about the decision and why he decided to buy the house. He told me, well, of course, it was because of the house's location. He told me how happy he was with the fact that it was so close to his work, how great it was that it was only a few minutes from his job. I said, yes, but what about its size? Do you still think the house is kind of small? And he looked at me kind of surprised. Small? What do you mean small? Like he didn't know what I was talking about. The house's size, a couple of years after buying it, just didn't seem to be on his mind anymore. Oh my God. So this is really hard because there's a lot of quotes and shit within the audio. This is what I hate. So you saw how I put those little quotes, right? And so here we go. Like I told you, there are references to points and times in the past, five to six years ago, a few years after that. This is exactly what I had said to you at the very beginning, okay? What he liked, the downside, tough decision, but he eventually he bought it. Let's break that down. Let me slow that down. Five to six years ago, there was this. What he liked about was one, two, and three. The downside is that one, such as it being smaller, he wanted a bigger house. The result, tough decision, but he bought it. A few years after, they had a conversation. What he loved about it was the same motherfucking thing that's right up here. It's the same goddamn thing that you see right here. And then the professor went on to ask him, what about the size? And the man looked confused. He didn't know what the professor was talking about. Therefore, a few years after buying it, it was the size was no longer a problem. See, you're going to have to somehow adapt different quotes and different quotes within stories to your overall saying. Or you could just break it down in a very literal and basic form. Now, I just showed you that there is two reference points, five to six years ago, a few years after that. Got to make sure you have those. Now, the main idea is that his friend wanted to buy a house. There were positives, there were negatives, there was a result, and then a few years after, after that, they had the same bullshit conversation, the man bought it for the same bullshit ideas. <laughs> but the biggest thing is the example in terms of, well, what about the sides? That's the big key that you cannot leave out. So what would this sound like? Well, let me give a nice little crack at it. Three, two, one. Choice support advice is defined as weighing a couple of options before favoring one after selecting it initially. The professor in the audio gives an example from his own life. Five to six years ago, he was helping a friend buy a house and his friend had narrowed it down to one house. What he liked about the house was the location. It was in the same part of town where his job was and he didn't have to travel far. However, the downside was that it was smaller and he wanted a bigger house. But after making a tough decision, he eventually bought the house. A few years after that, they were having a conversation and of course the professor asked his friend why he bought the house. And he said, well, it was because of the location. It was close to work. It was only a few minutes away. And the professor went on to say, well, what about the size? And his friend looked confused. He didn't know what he was talking about. Therefore, a few years after buying it, the size was no longer a problem. Okay, yes, I was very animated. Okay, I sound like I was a fucking narration. <laughs> but you see what I mean? Now, what did I do? So tell me, explain to me, but, but, but yeah, Rebecca, what do you think about that? What made it easy for me to flow from one idea to another? Because I fucked up a many of times before. <laughs> I have fucked up royally, okay? But yeah. in doing that sequencing, what do you think? 
Yeah, you use a lot of linking words and transition words that sounds fluently. Mm -hmm. That made yeah. it fluent. And yes, I did make it a little difficult because I said from five, six years ago, and then I used the past continuous. He was helping his friend buy a house and he had narrowed it down. So I used past continuous with past perfect. Don't make it too difficult. You could always just say five years ago, he helped a friend to buy a house and narrowed it down to one house. See, that's a past simple with a past simple. I use past continuous with the past perfect. Don't overextend on something you are unaware of doing because you're going to fall over and make little errors in regards to your grammar and boop, boop, boop. Okay, does that make sense, Maria Rebecca? I think so. so. remember what he liked, what he didn't like, the result a few years after that, had a conversation, this, that, and then the final result was this. This is the process in regards to the speaking question three. And this is how we're going to kick some ass.